This is now the third episode in the Uncle George build series, 93 Suburban with 632 big block. Today we're getting the body off the frame. Got to rip the running boards off, finish that up, pull the engine back out. We're just kind of in there for mock-up because decided that we're gonna make new motor side plates for these to move the engine forward like an inch and a half because it's just unnecessarily close to the firewall. It's a little bit better to have some more room for, you know, header primaries and all that. So we're gonna do that too. What is Logan working on? Taking the vinyl off. Taking the vinyl off the Harvard cart. All right, let's tear these running boards off. Well, got the running boards off. Hey, did you finish up the go-kart? Yep, I still. Cool, we're gonna take it in to get that um, sized up for graphics tomorrow. But luckily, I found out these rockers look pretty dang good. Had to do some cutting on some of these bolts because they're old and crunchy. This is really like not, these aren't even seamed, they're not split. I'm impressed by that. The only bad spot I knew about this already though is right here. Oh. Could we do a time lapse of just poking rust holes? Would that be cool? I don't know. I ordered a new um, quarter for this because it's a little soft right here and right here. Oh man. I really want to poke a hole in it, but. I don't want to poke a hole in it until we're about to cut it off because if I poke a hole in it, it's going to bother me until it comes off. Yeah. Yeah. The frame doesn't look too bad. Um, I sprayed some WD-40 on these mounts, so I don't think we're going to have a problem with those because we went and bought an impact today. No, this quarter's good. I think someone fixed it already. You can see some like, tape lines. Can we take the casting glass? Yeah. Feller neck and the vent hose, which I lubed those already. This is two hose clamps. Um, this is ground, probably for the fuel gauge, I would guess. I think we're going to disconnect the brake master cylinder from the brake booster, uh, the steering shaft, and the rear AC lines and heater lines, because they run along the frame. You can lower this thing down and get to it. Also, if you're wondering why the engine is still in there, it's just in there for ballast to have some weight in the front. Once we go to do the body, we'll take that back out. I'm just going to take these two nuts off right here. Don't know what happens when you do that because I've never done one of that before. <laughs> but I read online that um, you could do that instead of disconnecting all these lines, which we'll probably have to do later because I don't think this frame is going to like flop around on the rotisserie too much with this in our face. Oh, we'll see. We don't even need to use a rotisserie, but... He has one, so I feel like we have to do it just to make a post on the internet and bother people. Because people, a small amount of people are bothered that we're even doing this in the first place. It's a waste of time. Well, nothing's a waste of time if you enjoy it. That's all that matters. Mm. Oh. I labeled a bag for these, but I think this is a better place. There's a lot going on there. I don't know if we need this anymore. We'll do some research on that later. And I think we can just take this nut out right here and disconnect the shaft. Also, anybody in the comments know if you have to swap the whole column out to get the cable shift linkage? Because we want to get rid of the mechanical linkage. It takes up too much room next to the transmission. We need that room for headers. So we want the newer cable style one but I don't know if you have to change the whole column to do that. You know how Michael Scott wears like like maxi pads on his armpits yeah. for sweat? Like, <laughs> Damn you, Dylan. His gray shirts. Look at that. Factory Loctite still in there. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. I don't care. This is, this is real life. Like, oh. Yeah, thanks for the shirt, Dylan. I got it dirty already, too. But that's a really cool shirt. It is. This is a work jersey, not a shirt. A work jersey. <laughs> they need to make tool carts for taller people, so I don't have to bend over all the time. Cool. Wow, it looks like we know what we're doing. Well, we don't. 
let's repeat myself. This is a build series for this entire thing. Check out the Uncle George OBS Suburban playlist to follow the progression. I have to say that because there's new people every time. I don't know what can stay, what can go. We'll worry about this later. It'd be easier to figure out without the engine in the way. Just had a useful realization here. Back here is the rear AC evaporator thing and the rear heater core. That's what these lines are. This is like the coolant for the heater core and the AC ones. And I thought we were going to have to disconnect these to get the body off. And then I realized, oh man, we're going to have to like take the whole line out because it's anchored to the body the whole way. And then I was like, it's anchored to the body the whole way. Maybe it comes apart somewhere so it can stay on the body for service. So you trace it up here, follows the rocker all the way down, and then it makes a pass through. This would be the problem area. And on, behind this rubber boot here is a disconnect. I may not even need a special tool for this. I don't know. They got these plastic inner collar. You just push it in, kind of put some WD-40 in there and moved it around and it freed it up. It may leak a little bit. I don't know. Oh my God. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought about that because whenever you drain the engine, it just drains out, but this is a separate low point and all of that up there would be holding uh, fluid too. Here we go. Yeah. Really not much collateral damage in the mess department. I'm, I'm happy with that. Are you? Yeah. I'm gonna wipe this off my arm so I don't end up with coolant in my armpit because I don't need to make this any worse. And lower it down a little bit and do those, but with two wrenches this time. So this tiny line is three quarter and five eighths right here. And I'm gonna teach you a trick that I didn't learn until a couple months ago where you can, you can orient the wrenches however you want. I mean, you could do it like this and then be like, you know, jerking on it, whatever. But if you put them in a way to where the way you want it to go, you can squeeze them and then you have a ton of leverage on it and it works much better that way. But don't put your thumb in between here. That would be bad. Well, apparently they weren't even that tight, but which is, I guess, a pretty good thing. Maybe that's why I didn't have any refrigerant in it. Same thing for the bigger one. Uh, the big size is this big and the little size is this big, if that helps you at home. Yeah, that's right. The AC lines stay with the body. They're free of the frame now because the only ones that pass through the frame were the heater lines, which are now disconnected down there. But it looks like they also have a quick disconnect right here. I don't know what's even going to get reused from this whole conglomeration here. As much factoriness of it as we can, because we want it to all work. If you can make it work with the factory stuff, then you don't have to figure out something else to make it work. Kind of learned that with the Escalade. You just keep everything as original as possible. If it's broken, you can get a new one from a parts store. Makes your life easier. In the last video, I struggled to get this out, which is kind of why we took the front clip off piece by piece instead of lifting the whole thing out, which is probably better anyway, because now we can like, you know, it would have had to come apart anyway, because that fender's messed up. But there's just a quarter inch bolt in here. And as you're unscrewing that, make sure you're pulling on this so it'll get tension to come out. And if it's anything like this one, there's gonna be a bunch of goo in there, it's not gonna wanna move. But I spent a lot of time messing with these clips and this outer thing, there's like 80 million layers of clippage in here. Don't worry about any of that. It's all in that one bolt. And what are you working on? I'm just taking this off. Taking it off so we can clean it slash not break it when we're taking the body off. This is the part where Logan starts throwing things. We also got new door pins when the time comes for that too. A lot of stuff. I had this thing sit for I don't know, two years. And then we went and rescued it from my old garage in Pennsylvania back in, what was that, like September? We did that, I think, or August. 
-hmm. Yeah, August. You can go watch that video. It's on the playlist too. Sucking it. Today's installment of guy who has a lift but lays on the ground anyway. We are going to drop the gas tank onto this pile of tires. If you remember from the Monte Carlo videos, trans jack six feet in the air with a gas tank sloshing around on top of it with lines you're trying to disconnect. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It's just easier to do it closer to the ground. And we can plop it right onto these tires. And then once it's on there, we can raise the lift a little bit to get to the lines we need to disconnect up there. And just lift the truck away from the tank, roll it out. No danger of dropping it. Two straps, two bolts in the back, and they hook on up there. It's so. practically the same as the Monte Carlo. Yeah, basically. It's fine. Uh, I just had to pull it down. It was kind of stuck in there. Mmm. Sounds crunchy. Those bolts are long as hell. Big tank. I think this tank's like 42 gallons or something. It's massive compared to the newer ones. Awesome. So you get one knee under here like that. If you guys wonder why things don't get done faster, filming and building stuff is hard. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Well, we got everything disconnected under there. The fuel pump had a plug. It also had one ground, which very inconveniently bolted up to the top of the frame rail. So I just cut it because uh, we're not going to be reusing this. I also cut the feed and return lines. I believe that's a return for the pump because they're just rubber because we're not going to reuse those either. We probably could um, because I think that 3 8 line would be able to support enough to handle the 800 horsepower that the Zen is going to make. But they're old, crusty. We might as well just make new ones out of AN line anyway with uh, Holly or Red Horse stuff. So we just cut them, make it easier to get it out. And there was one vent line here. I took that one off nicely because we do plan on reusing this tank. And that may involve cutting new holes in the top to put like, you know, aftermarket sending unit in there or something. We don't know yet. There's three stink bugs on top of the gas tank right now. Are they alive? Yeah, two of them are. So we're gonna yeah. lift this thing up and then go flush those things down the toilet. Can't stand them. If you don't know already, flush them down the toilet, don't squish them, because when you squish them, their stink scent attracts more of them. You also can't light them on fire. I learned that the hard way. Did you do that once? Yeah, you yelled at me for doing it. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, because when they die, if they're in distress, basically, they release the stink. So you got to pick them up nicely, throw them in the toilet, like with a tissue paper or something. Or what you can do is like you take a piece of tape, wrap it around backwards, and then go and stick it. And, then, and for those that want to bitch about killing a bug, they're not native to the U.S. They're invasive. And you can guess where they came from. Yep. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hold on. Oh, it's hitting this way, Barb. Yeah. I think we're good now. What the heck? Yeah, there's four of them right there. Don't know why, but you're all gonna die. It's a good thing we decided to take the tank out before lifting the body because there's two body mounts here that are kind of obstructed by the gas tank, which I didn't know about before because I went through and sprayed WD-40 on what I thought was all of them. And these ones are dry, so I didn't know they were there. That's how I know. That's how I know I didn't know. I don't know if this is gonna help at all, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because it makes me feel better. The sub-harness here, this one had like a little T-hand in here to intercept the light signals for a, a tow plug, which is nice. There's a harness that 
runs the length of here, one splits off to the fuel pump, and then the rest of it keeps going back here, ends right here, which one of it went inside of here, the other one went in there. And the other side, the body part is right here, which has all the lights, and then this one was for the plate lights. This little thingy right here, you can see where they go. That's always handy. And this runs right up to here into this harness. Half of it goes this way, the other half goes this way. You can see it runs right up there. It goes boom into that tail light. And the other one goes doo 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 into here for that one. I don't see anything else that we have to disconnect to lift the body off besides the mount bolts. Also, we're going to put a 9.5 inch 14 bolt rear end in here, which is the same one that the Escalade has, but we're going to find one from like a heavy half ton, or either like a heavy half ton or a lightweight three quarter ton. So it would be a 2500 with six lug axles or like a heavy duty half ton. I don't know. Either way, we'll put a true track in it. And uh, I already have a diff cover for it that I got for the Escalade, and then it didn't fit behind the panhard bar so i was like oh, i'll just keep it and use it on future burb four years later here we are mm. i mean i thought stuff was gonna fall out but i wasn't ready for like all that <laughs> mm. dinosaurs i am so glad we bought this thing because cranking that by hand would be here for hours <laughs> you know it's bad when this thing is stumped I was gonna set up a time lapse. Maybe we should film up close for this because you never know when you're gonna get surprised like that. Look at my hair. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. If you didn't thumbs up this video already, you should, just cause she's beast. Oh, that was a big one. Mm -hmm. Good job, by the way. Thank you. Do you feel accomplished? So accomplished. Well, well, uh, much heavier than and look at that. You just go right into the next task. That's awesome. Minimizing downtime. We're going to like reassemble the front clip and then put it up on the wall. Tech tip. I just caught myself doing this and realized it might be helpful to somebody. When you're trying to get a bolt out like this where you beat the backside out, but it, you know, it's too stuck to just pull it. Find a wrench that fits over the shaft, but not the head. And you can just get it out like that. And then if you can't pry on it anymore, then you could take a hammer and tap the backside and get it out that way. Can I see that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Boom. Now that we got the engine out of the way, looks like we got a few more things to disconnect up here <sighs> well apparently this uh plug here doesn't actually unplug you have to go inside take the glove box apart unplug it from the computer inside there and then pass it through the firewall and i only know this because we just looked it up we want the factory functions to work from inside like the ac hvac that stuff but we have a whole gauge cluster that's new from new vintage usa so we don't know how they're sending units work if they're independent or what got to do research on that so we can get to figuring this out well after some messing around i found out that the two plugs for the factory pcm in there like the tbi computer are run through this harness with a bunch of other stuff like 
things that control the heater controls and the starter and things like that, things we need. So we can't just cut that. And I remembered that this main plug here that I was fussing with earlier came apart. So I thought maybe I could just separate the engine side from the rest of it, which the engine would be the top. So I took that apart, unplugged a couple things from in here. And now this whole harness, the engine side is completely tied to the body, has nothing left to connect to the frame. So when we lift the body, that Medusa will just dangle there and then I can do more research and figure out how to clean that up or whatever place it. I, I don't know. I don't know what's out there. I don't know if there's any aftermarket solutions that just replace all that nonsense with new stuff and only keep the things you need so you can add your own engine management system. Don't know. Look into that. <laughs> body mount we didn't do oh yeah i forgot about that <laughs> okay and that right there is why you see pictures of people dumping these things because it's very if you're not diligent we would have just raised it up and been like oh it's this still stuck to it oh you're just diving in okay you want to go to bed <laughs> hmm. well Let's get the big breaker out for that one. I may have to break that. It's either turning or it's breaking, I don't know. But I'm gonna be very cautious of that to make sure that I don't punch the frame rail. so I don't think it's breaking. It might still break though. Getting winded. This is hard. Good thing we did legs today or I wouldn't be able to do this. I need a minute. Several minutes of everything I got cranking later. It might be loose enough to have the impact to it. I hope so. If not, I'm gonna have to take another break and come back to this in a minute. Catch my breath. Okay, here we go, fingers crossed. Never have I ever had to put that much effort. things episodes because then it sounds produced you know what I mean it's just video hope you learn something that's what we're going for to learn to entertain educate value-based 
that's what we do. If we're not bringing value in a video somewhere, primarily through information, uh, we're doing something wrong. Because I don't wanna make videos that I wouldn't wanna watch. And if I'm gonna watch something for fun, I wanna learn something while I'm doing it. That's why we used to really like Roadkill. Used to. Um, now I just don't have time to watch anything anymore. But in the next video, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the plan of attack is going to be. Probably getting the frame out, cleaning it off, starting to paint it because the poor 15 showed up. That's what we're doing. In the meantime, I'm going to order some parts like tie rods. Um, you know, I don't know. Stuff. Doing stuff and things. If you find this build interesting, tell one of your friends about it. That's the best way for us to grow because the algorithm doesn't really like these build videos for some reason. You know, you do something with burnouts or an abandoned car dealership or whatever, it's just like, hey, let's show it to everybody who subscribes to you and more. But this kind of stuff doesn't really help you out. So if you like this, your friends are probably like you. If you think they would like it too, tell them about it. Text them a link. Hit the share button at the bottom. That helps too. If you don't have any friends, you can just sum up the video or something. Leave a comment. Talk to us. Things like that. It's all fun. We're just glad to be here. We're glad to be able to do this stuff. And you guys are what make it happen. And you can check out staplesandautoworks.com if you like the hat or that we're wearing. Not the shirt. This shirt, yes. Not the other ones. Those are our friend Dylan Diggins E71. He sells those. We'll see you there. Check out the playlist.